Hi, this is David McCann for WebTNG. In this video, I'm taking a look at the pro version of the Login Lockdown Security Plugin. I'll do a walkthrough of the options available in the WordPress admin, look at the central dashboard available for managing the plugin, and view the plugin's website and pricing. WP Login Lockdown has a free version that's available in the WordPress plugin directory. You can see it has more than 100,000 active installs. It's got 43 five-star reviews, a pretty good rating, and five out of five support issues have been resolved in the last two months. The plugin's being developed by Web Factory, but originally it was added to the WordPress plugin directory way back in 2007. And it was doing well for many years until recently the original author was no longer able to keep it up and Web Factory took it over. When they took it over, they did some quick fixes to bring it up to date. And then they've developed a pro version. And it's the pro version that I'm going to take a look at. This is the website for the plugin. It's actually a pretty nice looking website. We'll look at the features in a few minutes, but I wanted to show you the pricing. On the website, they have three pricing tiers, one site license, five site license, and a hundred site license. And it's being introduced with lifetime packages. And in addition to the number of sites, there's another difference in the packages. When you move up from the lowest tier to the middle tier, you get a white label mode where you can hide their branding. And if you go up to the highest tier, then you get the option to rebrand the plugin to give it your own logo and name. Now, when you purchase the plugin, you get access to this online dashboard. If you've used any of the other Web Factory plugins, you might be familiar with this. It's a pretty good convenience. In addition to being able to download the plugin, you can look at your purchases, you can manage your licenses. If you have the highest tier, you can rebrand the plugin. You can manage the websites that the plugin is installed in. You can block the site. You can reset the plugin and sync the stats. Then there's this area here where you can insert IP addresses into a whitelist and the IPs in the whitelist will not be blocked. Or you can also insert IP addresses into the blacklist and IPs in the blacklist will not be able to access any of your websites. So this is for all of your websites using the login lockdown plugin. So you have your own kind of global whitelist, blacklist. Here you have your user profile, support, and then documentation. And these are the help articles that they have created. Currently, while making the video, the login lockdown plugin is available on AppSumo. In a month or so, it may no longer be available here. Okay, if we look at the plans, Again, we see that there are three tiers. However, the tiers are a little different. The lowest tier is five websites. The middle tier is 50 websites and it has the white label. Or you have unlimited websites and that has the white label and the rebranding. If you buy from AppSumo, then you have the 60 day money back guarantee. So I have a test site here. I've installed the plugin. One thing I wanted to mention is even though there is a free version, you don't have to have the free version installed to use the Pro. So I like that it's one last plugin, so that's a nice convenience. The settings for the plugin are here on submenu, and there are several tabs here. Within the first one for the main feature, login protection, there are three sets of settings. You might be familiar with these types of settings if you've used other security plugins. They're the number of retries someone has before they get locked out, the period of time where the retries are counted, how long they're locked out for, whether you're gonna log, login attempts 
when people use non-existent usernames, whether to hide the login errors so that you don't give clues to people by telling them the user doesn't exist or that's a bad password, whether you want to completely block access to the website or only block access to the login page, the message, and you can add a whitelist here if you like. If you want to be nice to the developer, you can show a credit link. On advanced, you can test user passwords. So this can be convenient to make sure none of the admins on your site have a weak password. You can make the logging anonymous, which is what you want to do for GDPR. You can block bots from accessing the login page. So you can immediately block people who try to log in with a non-existent username. You can add a honeypot for bots. You can set the cookie lifetime if the people click on remember me. And you have the option to remove the tables that the plugin creates when you uninstall the plugin. And then under tools, you can test to make sure that you can receive an email from your site. You can copy a recovery URL and keep that safe somewhere in your notes for your websites in case you accidentally get logged out. You can export settings and import them if you have a number of sites using the same plugin to make it easier to set up. And then this is a statistics dashboard where you can see where users are coming from, what browsers they're using, whether they're desktop or mobile, things like that. And you can look at failed login attempts here. The plugin has the ability to block visitors by country. Some people like that if they have a website, maybe it's a family website or for employees and you know that everybody lives in the same country and so there's no reason for people from other countries to try to log in. Then you can do the blocking by whitelist or blacklist. So if it's just one or two countries you want to allow people to log in from, whitelist makes sense. If it's just one or two countries you want to block, then blacklist makes sense. And again, you can block access to the entire website or just to the login page. It's good to have two-factor authentication. The way it works with login lockdown is that they'll send you an email with a one-time link to confirm the login. So you'll need to have access to your email for the two-factor authentication. There's CAPTCHA and they have a number of options here. You can have it disabled. You can use the built-in CAPTCHA, which is a math CAPTCHA. And that's actually usually pretty effective. It tells you here if the options you're using are GDPR compatible or not. You have the link to get the API keys. HCAPTCHA is GDPR compatible, so that's the one they recommend. And HCAPTCHA has a free tier and a paid tier. There's cloud protection. And so what this is, is you have your whitelist and blacklist that we saw in the dashboard. So you can enable that if you've entered IPs there. And then you can use their global cloud blacklist. What this is, if a bad IP is blocked on another site of web factories, then it'll get added to the blacklist and they won't even be allowed to try to log in on your site. Again, for the cloud protection, you have the option for block the entire website or just the login page and to set the message. There's a tab here for temporary access. What you can do here, you know, this site has several users. You can give them a link to log in or you can create a new user or a guest and give them a temporary link and you can set how long it's good for and how many uses. So this would be useful if you're giving, say, some support agent temporary access to your site 
And so this is here in case you forget to turn it off or disable it. You don't have to worry about them having continued access. This is a link to the support options. And this is where you enter your license key. Okay, so that's a walkthrough of the settings in the admin dashboard. Just a couple of comments and thoughts that I'll share with you. When we looked at the plugins here, you may have noticed that I have the BBQ firewall block bad queries firewall here. This is a firewall plugin and login lockdown doesn't have a firewall. One thing I've noticed, and you may have noticed in looking at different WordPress security plugins, is each one has a different set of features and different things that they address and protect. And so sometimes I combine a couple of plugins together to provide more comprehensive coverage. So in this case, I've added the free BBQ firewall plugin which I think is a good complement to security plugins that don't have a firewall. So I think if you're trying to decide if Login Lockdown Pro is something that is of interest to you, I would take a look at the other security plugins you own if you have any. If you don't own other security plugins, then the pricing right now is pretty good. So it's a chance to buy one when it's first released before the pricing increases. But if you do have other security plugins and you already have something that provides protection for the login page and gives you two-factor authentication and some of the other features of this, then you may not need to purchase Login Lockdown Pro. So that's something you'll have to determine if it makes sense for you or not. I've used other plugins by Web Factory. One of my favorites is the WP Reset Pro plugin, which allows you to reset sites and take snapshots of sites. I use that when developing sites or doing a lot of testing. It's a big convenience. They also have a redirect plugin and a coming soon maintenance mode plugin. So they've been around for a while and have a pretty good track record. Okay, that's my look at the Login Lockdown Pro security plugin. There's a text summary of the video available on the WebTNG website, along with other walkthroughs, reviews, and resources. I hope you liked this video, and if you did, please hit the subscribe button because it helps to spread the word about the channel. Thank you for watching.